Let's say that we have some configuration of charges which are stationary and that we also have the charge Q. Now we want to move this charge Q from point A to some other point B along some path. Now we know that this configuration of source charges will set up an electric field in the space around it and due to that electric field this charge Q will experience an electrostatic force. So we can write that electrostatic force, I'll write the subscript elec for electrostatic which will be equal to the magnitude of the charge which is Q times the electric field. This electric field is the electric field set up by the configuration of source charges. Now as we move this charge Q from point A to point B, we have to apply a force which, will, which is the external force that we apply in the opposite direction to that of the electric field. So the external force which we apply, I'll write EXT for external, will be equal to negative charge times the electric field. Now, when we apply this force, external force, as we move the charge from point A to point B, essentially what we are doing is that we are doing a work against the electric field which was set up by the source charges. So the work that we do or work done, we know can be written as the line integral of the force and the force in our case will be the external force dot dl. DL is a small line element along the path, so this will be a small DL in this case. And we integrate it over the entire path from point A to point B. Now we know we can write this external force like this. So we'll make that substitution. Point A to B will take minus NQ outside since it is constant. E dot DL. Now, in the previous video, we saw that the line integral of electric field, which is this, was independent of the path. That is, the electric field did not depend on the path. So we said that the electric field was a conservative field. And since this integral does not depend on the path, therefore this line integral of the force also does not depend on the path. And we know that when a line integral of a force is independent of the path, we call that force as conservative. Conservative forces. And we also know that for conservative forces, we can define potential energy. Or in this case, we will call it electric potential energy. So now we will get back to our work done. Now we also saw in the previous video that the potential difference V of B minus V of A can be written as minus A to B line integral of E. So it will be e dot dl, which is what we have over here. So we can make the substitution. Instead of the line integral of electric field, we can write the potential difference. So we would get work done. So work done will be equal to the charge times V of B minus V of A. So this will be the work done as we move the charge Q from point A to point B. Now, as we move the charge from point A to point B, if we are not changing the velocity, then we are not changing its kinetic energy. Since the kinetic energy was equal to half m v square, and we assume that m is a constant. So, if the velocity is not changing, then the kinetic energy will also not change. So, the kinetic energy initial minus the kinetic energy final will be equal to zero. That is, the change in kinetic energy will be equal to zero. And from the work energy theorem, we know that the net work done is equal to the change in kinetic energy, which is equal to zero.
and we can split up the net work done into the work done by electric field. So we'll write the subscript electric plus the work done by external forces. This as a whole will be equal to zero. We can further write it as the work done by external forces will be equal to the negative of work done by electrical forces or electrostatic force. And we know that the negative of work done will be nothing but the change in potential energy. And we write potential energy by U. And in our case, the work was done by the external force which we applied. So the work done will also be external in this case. So we can finally write the change in potential energy is equal to the external work done which we did which will be equal to the charge Q times V of B minus V of A. Now we can expand this as U of B minus U of A is equal to the charge times V of B minus V of A. So this is the formula to find the electric potential energy or, or the difference in electric potential energy which we represent by UB minus UA which will be equal to the charge that we are moving times the difference in potential at the final point minus the initial point. Now what if we move the charge from infinity to some point R, let's say. Then it will be U of R minus U of infinity. This will be equal to charge times V of R minus V of infinity. And now, since the potential energy comes and depends on the configuration, that is, it depends on the separation between them and essentially it's the difference in the values that matters. So we can assign the potential at infinity we already know is zero and now we assign the potential energy at infinity as also zero. So the potential energy at the point R will be equal to charge times the potential at that point. So this will be the value of absolute potential energy at some point. In, in this, we have implicitly assumed that the potential and the potential energy at infinity are equal to zero. So this is what we call as electric or electrostatic potential energy. This will also be equal to the external work that we do. So this will also be equal to the work that we do to move the charge from point A to point B or from infinity to R in this case. 